Welcome to KPFT's coverage of Super Tuesday. My name is Egberto Willies. I'm the host of Politics Done Right every Tuesday at 3 p.m. And I'm here with Dr. Franklin Jones. We're going to have a whole lot of talk about this election, not only locally, but nationally. And we, we have some interesting things, some interesting outlooks that we're going to have about this subject. Dr. Jones, welcome aboard. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Well, I mean, I, I think I think we ought to have uh, some f- a little bit of fun tonight in what is turning out to be an election that no one thought was possible. It almost seems like uh, folks doubled down and said we are going to will who we want to be the candidate for the Democratic Party. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that uh, what we're seeing tonight is something that uh, was expected before the season began. Uh, the, the notions were that uh, uh, Biden was going to be the, the, the leading candidate, that, that uh, Sanders was going to be uh, the voice for those folks who were just getting involved in the election process and who were talking about moving toward a more progressive agenda. And, and I think after we saw a lot of the people who were in the race beginning to fall out, uh, that battle between, quote, Biden and the, the, his wing of the, political, of the party and uh, the wing of the political party that Sanders supposedly represents, you know, just has come to the pass. Now, uh, you know, I, I know you say that, right? But I, I kind of have a, a, an interesting feeling about the, the election. And we're starting nationally, folks, because, again, Texas is still, there are still people in the line th- throughout Texas. Right. TSU, G- West Gray, and here in Harris County, in Austin, the lines are wrapped around. They're still trying to uh, get folks in. So let since we have a whole lot of national results, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that. Right, but let's say something first about th- these long lines in Texas. Yes. You, you have to re- recall that over the last two years, the, the state of Texas has gotten rid of a number of uh, polling locations, particularly ones that were in minority communities. And tell us and so why. this whole notion of, of suppressing the vote, uh, which was a key uh, strategy on the part of Republicans, uh, not only in Texas but in other places, is that this will increase their chances of winning by lowering the number of possibilities for folks who were black, Latino, and others to actually vote in races, and also those progressive forces they sought. So if you began to reduce the number of opportunities for people to vote, uh, and you've targeted where you're re- making those reductions, you're really increasing the chances of the other side to win. Absolutely, so, and that is exactly what's happening, not only uh, in Texas, but in many of the other states that we call the red states. But ironically speaking, I don't know how much, uh, you know, th- while that is true, I don't know how much that may not be happening, even in some blue states where other undesirables may, may undesirables for the plutocracy may be. Your thoughts on that? Right, well, you know, the, the, the whole notion that uh, voting is a right uh, has to be abused because it's really a privilege. And those folks who are in charge of making the rules make the rules to benefit themselves. And, and when, it is, when it is in their interest to have an expanding electorate, they will move toward that. When it is interest to having a, a, a smaller electorate, they will move toward that. And so uh, the history is, is very clear in terms of no matter who is in power, they will make those decisions that is in their particular interest. Now, and that, that re- really is in re- irrespective of party, correct? Correct. Now, now let me just uh, kind of go to national. We're, we're taking a look at what, what the national news right now. Mm-hmm. Now, doctor, let me ask you a question because uh, we know what the polls said previous to South Carolina. Before we get into the rationale or the reasoning of what occurred in, 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 in South Carolina, do you really think there is a possibility that you get that sort of a swing from a vote in a small uh, that w- whose catalyst was a vote in a small state. Well, if 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 you really pay a little bit more attention to the polls, one of the one of the largest areas in almost all these polls was this, this, the number of undecided votes. Right, and and it was making these projections on the number of people that said who were likely to vote, who said they were going to vote, and so you had this large number of people who said they had not made up their minds yet. Right, and so uh, it's not difficult to see that it was a big gap between what was being reported in those earlier polls and what was actually happening uh, on election day. Another thing, too, is that more and more we're seeing now that people don't necessarily respect you know, some of the polls, and so they may not necessarily tell uh, the pollsters uh, what the actual choices are. 
Right. And then when when the voting actually comes out, it it it, it becomes different. I'm always uh, talking about what I call the Bradley effect. I remember that right. from uh, the, the, about the, 15, the mayor of uh, Los, Los Angeles. Angeles right. Yeah. And there's about a 15 point gap between what people said they were going to do mm-hmm. and what they actually did. And so I, 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 I'm always mindful of that when I look at uh, polls, particularly in, 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 in the highly contested elections and elections where they talk a lot about uh, the role of race and the importance of the elections showing there is no racial issue uh, and that it's simply a matter of people making a choice as to who is the better candidate, blah, 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 those kinds of things. And so what, what I think what we saw happening in, Cal- in uh, South Carolina, uh, in my mind, was an example of a large number of folks who had not said who they were going to vote for, uh, a large number of people who uh, were leaning uh, uh, but still did not say who they were going to vote for, and they just simply came out and did what they uh, were expected to do prior to the polls. Now, let, let, let's let's go a little bit deeper here because I, I have a, another thing. Don't you think it makes a difference as well that when you have uh, a corporate control media with an agenda that after you get a win in a small state turns it into a 24-7 ad for you, making you seem to be inevitable? Oh, they did that. And not only that was that they uh, decided to to attack Biden before the uh, actual primary in terms of saying who he was and what was happening and and how I'm oh, sorry attacking uh, uh, Sanders, uh, Sanders saying yeah. who he was and and this whole notion of socialism versus capitalism or whatever it was a kind of red scare kind of tactic that was going on right and and it kept suggesting that. Uh, he was not the kind of person that quote certain kind of people want to have. Right. And so, once they had laid that uh, predicate down, then when they got the results, they saw that as a as a uh, validation of what they were yeah. saying. And so, at, at at that point, they then decided, okay, we have our leader now, and we're going to push to try to make certain that if anyone was doubtful about uh, this fella, they now know that he's not a good fellow. Yeah, and you know it is it, it it is a type of manipulation, and I mean it, it's ironic because that is what uh, many accuse, let's say, some of, of the outsiders of doing during the t- the twenty sixteen election, and here we are, we, and, and in this case, Hillary v. Uh, tr- v. Trump. And in this case, it turns out that it's done in the other. Now, uh, we still don't have results in Texas, and it seems like a lot of Texas uh, things are still going. But uh, uh, one of our perennial candidates I noticed here seemed to have avoided a runoff, Sheila Jackson Lee, here in Houston. Folks, uh, for those of you that are listening nationally, we'll kind of go into some of the other national campaigns as well. Now, when when we look at uh, where the state of the election is, it seems like, the, the, the theory was that at the end of tonight, uh, Bernie Sanders would have had a large quantity of delegates over Biden. If these numbers that we are seeing continue, it may be a wash or who knows? It could, I mean, we don't know what direction this is going to happen. I don't think I've ever seen from the time I've been in this country watching these types of, of elections as such a transformation in two days. I am not sure how this is to be interpreted. I am not sure if this is saying we have a fickle-minded constituency, if we have uh, some other type of uh, dynamics that I don't understand, Mm -hmm. but I don't think you, you move masses with this speed unless we have one or one of these types of, uh, Issues, if you will. Right. Well, I, I think a lot of it had to do deal with the punditry class, right? Say that again. I, a lot had to do with the punditry, punditry class. Yes, is that things were a lot different than what was being uh, projected. Right. I mean, for example, uh, the whole notion that that, that that Biden was completely out of it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, was 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 one thing that was being pushed. The notion that you had, uh, you know, Bloomberg and the other folks who were, you know really doing these kinds of things that were going to attract people. Right. Again, without getting uh, statements from actual voters themselves as to what they were going to do. Uh, I think that uh, the, the voters were completely unready, you know, for what was being projected as, as what was, was going on. And so when you saw this, this what happened in South Carolina, 
uh, as some kind of manifestation of what was going to happen in the future. I mean, can you think of this? Is that uh, they are now saying that black folks save both uh, Biden and the Democratic Party. Yes. And, and all the praises to black folks for setting America on the right path. Right. And so now the rest of the uh, of of the South and the United States can follow the lead of these black folks in terms of turning this around and saving us from this ungodly socialist kind of movement that appears to be uh, drafted, uh, developing. Now, if you if you go back to 1968 and where we saw the uh, the black uh, the, the development of the black power movement and we saw the development of the counterculture movement of who are, who are now the baby boomers who are pushing right. outside the United right. States. We saw the same kind of shock and surprise about what was going on and this, and this idea that we have to somehow uh, rustle away from this wave of change that's coming forth right. and, and bring about uh, a, a Nixon administration, which was you know, a, 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 a movement that was designed to try to stamp down all this progressiveness that was coming on at that right. time, right? And so I think you can make a parallel in terms of what was actually going on now. There was a possibility of millennials beginning to raise questions about what their parents or grandparents were doing and the, and the direction of the United Legitimately States. Legitimately so. Right? Yes. And, and so now what is happening is that, well, uh, we, we, we like you young folks, but we want to make sure that you kind of stay in your place because you don't have enough information and knowledge to make the decisions about where this country should be going. And so I, so I, so I think that all this is much greater than the, 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 the quote, Biden versus Sanders race for the presidency. You're saying that that is just a that is just a manifestation of, of something this, that is much deeper of of, of, the, of this greater of, of this greater fight for where the United States is going. Right. And 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 and, and what what young people are saying that uh, the United States has failed us in this regard, and we're going to try to write it as we defined it, write it to to, to make it a better place. But to do that, to do that, you have to convince. Uh, older Gen Xers, you have to convince baby boomers that they are actually fighting for something just, and not only something just, but something that will make them economically stable. Uh, well, you and I both know that the path that we are on is actually a path of economic disaster for all but the very top of this country. But I guess the other thing is that uh, when, you, when you start talking about systemic change, it's, it's not going to be any kind of mass-based movement. Right. I mean, there, there's go, there's going to be a sort of cadre. Right. That that that, that leads this particular struggle, and the question is how how can this cadre convince and uh, socialize enough people that they need to move in this kind of direction? And that's my that actually, I think that is the question because we thought uh, w we look at somebody like Bernie Sanders and we see the movement that he's making with millennials, and it is a movement. I mean, I've I've seen it since 2015. It is it is really a movement. You don't you don't raise hundreds of millions of dollars from 20 million people if you don't have a movement. The question is as you as you placed it, how 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 does the movement grow to something that the plutocracy itself doesn't control because as it is with them having control of the media you see what happened with South Carolina uh, black folks in South Carolina was pretty much I, I, I hate to just put it this way but they were used okay and uh, the, the the con continued throughout if we want when when uh, the past what's his name uh, the guy from that just that was Clinton's protege uh, James Carville oh. When James Carville has the gall to come on TV and says, thank you, black people, for saving the Democratic Party. And, you know, uh, black women have been saying for a long time they were the, the, the heart of the Democratic mm -hmm. Party. The Democratic Party, look at the leadership of the Democratic Party. Look at the, what the, Demo the things the Democratic Party stands for. None of these particular issues, none of these particular deeds, none of these particular policies are there to enhance the people that need it the most, black people, people of color, etc., Yet they are the ones who save the party, and yet the policies that Biden says he wants to bring are not the policies that are going to help the people who is going to likely help him to get into power if he's lucky to do so. Right. Uh, the, the two major political parties are not about 
uh, making systemic change in the United States. Right, absolutely. So we, we, have, we have to understand. They are both uh, 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 sides of the same coin. Right. We begin. We begin to talk about the whole question of of contesting for power and contesting for systemic change. Uh, and when, when you begin to, if if you are an out group, right, and you're trying to liberate yourselves, and you're liberating yourselves inside of the rules that have been designed by the person who is in fact uh, oppressing you, right, uh, you're not going to go very far. I mean, for the whole, whole example, of the, the big question now about how successful Sanders has been in terms of raising monies to help pay for this particular campaign, which is a system that is based upon the money. And quite frankly, he cannot compete with the, with, the, with, the with, corporate with, with dollars. Big money, right? right. And and so and so you are bound to find yourself in this position where you're simply uh, 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 making minor changes on, the, on edges. the edges, right? Right. And so that fundamentally, fundamentally what's necessary for the liberation of people in the United States, right, is not going to go through, you know, uh, these two political parties uh, uh, challenging one another. Uh, there, there will be differences oh, wait, in terms of... Wait, 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 wait. Of, I'll explain that. You said a, a systemic change cannot occur... Both, of these, with, both yeah. of these political parties are capitalist political parties. Yes. Right? They are designed to promote the development of a capitalist society in the United States. Right. right. They both make decisions on what they're willing to give up in order to maintain their position of power uh, without, you know, uh, Substantially system, changing, right? yeah. Right. And and so, what 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 they've both been very successful in doing has been able to socialize the masses of people in the United States that this is the correct way to go in terms of trying to make yourself uh, to to receive the, the the maximum amount of benefits you can from the society. And so that that is what is happening. And some folks get goodies, uh, other folks don't. Right? Enough folks get goodies that they. Uh, the, 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 are ready to vamp on those folks who don't have them, who are trying I to I call them the there. guardians of the gate. You only need a few guardians. If you have a strong gate, you only need a few right. guardians of the gate. Right. And, 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 so, and so, what, so what we're seeing is that uh, we're not talking about systemic change. We are talking about making uh, modest adjustments <coughs> that in no way will, will, will transform the power arrangement inside the United States. Right. We still don't have numbers, but what we do have is that San, that uh, that Biden is wrecking up the South. Uh, Bernie has won Colorado and uh, his home state of Vermont. Massachusetts, can you believe, is so far going to, uh, not called, but so far Biden is winning in Massachusetts, mm-hmm. followed by Bernie. And, 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 and Elizabeth Warren is, is coming on, in third, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and I mean there there are a bunch of other dynamics that play in terms of 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 people making choices about gender uh, uh, in this race uh, and quote the the whole electability question that was thrown out there and and, and what had happened to to uh, what Trump did to Hillary in the last right. time uh, that has some problems. We still a society where uh, we don't really respect the role of women in our society. We don't. Right. And so what we, we talk a lot about, you know, breaking glass ceilings and doing all this kind of stuff. But f- but fundamentally, you know, that 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 the whole notion of maintaining uh, male superiority is there. I mean, we look at the the, the difference in terms of the black the, the black male vote and the black uh female, female vote. vote. Yeah. And we and we look at the more progressive uh, Look at voters, this. Right. The more progressive voters are black women. Minnesota won by Biden. Right. And and of course Minnesota used to be this bastion of liberalism that yes. that won that even though Klobuchar resigned, I mean uh, decided not to write her name was still on the ballot, right? Well the Klobuchar votes said, went to uh to Biden yeah. likely, but uh, ironically yeah. speaking, it used to be the bastion of uh and this so, this I, I I I am I am flabbergasted now. I mean, I don't see this was a calculated transformation. And the thing about it, uh, Dr. Jones, I tell you, is I think the implications of this is deeper than... I think the, the idea behind this is to break the faith of the millennials that they have any power to do anything by this sort of a, uh, this sort, this sort of a con. It's, it's, it's going to challenge them to, to figure out how they want to struggle. Yes. Right? Uh, and, and if the 
if the struggle does not get beyond, uh, you know, I'm going to register to vote and, 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 and try to find somebody who looks like me to vote for, uh, then, you know, they lose, right? I mean, the, 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 the thing now is how do you take this and develop a, a mass-based struggle beyond, quote, voting? Because if you're challenging for political power, if you're trying to change the system, it is more than simply voting. Right. right? Well, you know, I, I, ironically that you said that because I, I, I've participated in some other um, organizations where uh, these people just said we need to f- give up on electoral politics and we need to find other ways to force the uh, to force the plutocracy into submitting to the masses. And they said electoral politics may not be the way. Now, what we are seeing, uh, uh, but what we are seeing here uh, is again. Like I said, uh, the dynamics, we have to examine the dynamics. Mm-hmm. I want, I, I understand where you said, well, a lot of people said they were undecided. Uh, but we saw Biden in action in debates. We saw Biden's uh, reaction in, in, in many areas. What is, what is occurring the, with the American body politic? I, I, <laughs> I mean, look. I am watching this you, in complete. You 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 you're making an assumption that that the history has shown us uh, uh, a a long line of historic of, of uh, logical decisions made in voting. Well, that's right? I mean I, you got me on and, that if, one. If we go back and we look at that, we have to, we can raise the same kinds of questions. Why did they vote? I mean, why did they vote for Trump? Right? Uh, logically, you go back earlier, and and when you're talking about uh, uh, losing faith in the electoral process. Uh, when we were growing up in the 1960s, yes. right, and, and and we 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 had talked about you know changing the system and and folks got into voting and lost everything, and the the development of organizations. You remember one of the things that 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 uh, he was stoked at that time, but but Kwame Ture was always saying that you know get organized, get, have organized, organize these cells and begin to move for that. You have to, be, to, to do that. You have to develop those organizations. You have to have those agendas. And then you make decisions based upon that agenda and that organization, right? You don't look at a person to, quote, lead you. You develop the organization. Then you check. Then you decide somebody. Explain lead, that right? with, with regards to, I mean, let's say, the Bernie movement. Right. Well, in, in terms of the Bernie movement, right? Uh, Bernie is not going to save the country. Absolutely not, right. right? Bernie's not going to save the country. If you put all of your belief and faith in a single individual, that individual can be capped. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yes. And then he's gone. Then, then what do you do? But when you have the foundation that is there, you tell that leader, "Hey, look, look. No, we selected you. This is what it's going to be." Right. Doctor Jones, I think uh, I think that's a prescient statement that we need to get out there because I can tell you right now there 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 are. Hundreds of thousands, there are millions right now of millennials right now that uh, tonight will be the most depressing time in their lives because tonight is going to show them that the power of the plutocracy is great and they are going to wonder if they, you know, after putting that much faith, let's say, in this particular movement led by Bernie Sanders, they are going to wonder. Uh, can they ever really attain uh, that which they're looking for? Right. They they have to understand that they are the movement. Exactly. They are the movement. Uh, Bernie Sanders is not the movement. Right? Yes. And this is what we want to do. This is how we're going to, to move. This is how socially, politically, economically, all these things are connected, right? Right. And so, so we begin to think about what is our social position within society. Uh, how are we behaving economically in the society? Right, and and then you know, integrate that with the political process in terms of gaining control of certain segments of the government. But I want to, I want, I, I need because to, I, think, I, I need to hold you right mm-hmm. there because this is a, this. I mean, I I think what we're seeing here, uh, for for the young people to understand is is deep, and 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 serious. We saw a win from a small state used as the catalyst, the ad, by a corporate controlled Mm -hmm. media to get a gold in framing an argument to a timid, scared people who thought when the mainstream media says this is a race between two people and one of them 
it's going to take us where we don't want to go and we will lose. Mm. We had th that systemic setup. Um, how are we going to tell the young people to detach themselves from that and then build themselves up with that movement? Okay, now it didn't start with South Carolina. I mean, the, the whole the whole question of how, okay, well, that's true. Right, how, how, how the corporate media has framed elections in general in terms of who should rule. Right. right? And, and so, so that, that is very basic. Right? And so once you decide who should rule, then you can do, go through these other things and say, okay, well, in this state we're going to do this, in this state we're going to do that, in this state we're going to do that. And, and each time you develop a narrative which supports what you're doing. I mean, for example, when you started with covering Iowa, right, and, 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 and the importance of that and saying where people were and what they were going to do, uh, that becomes it. Now, again, it is, when you, when you look at all the su successful revolutions that have gone on in the world, I think, you see that they have started out uh, with 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 the cadre. Now, oftentimes the cadre uh, fights in the name of the people, but they're really pushing you know the right. cadre. And hopefully, at some point, they bring the people along. But you have they uh, they have to begin to understand what is my relationship with this political and economic system, right? Once you understand what that relationship is, then what can I do to 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 change my relationship if I want to, and also raise the question of what is my relationship with the rest of the society? Right. right. Because quite frankly, you can be very progressive and be a progressive banker, right? Right. And so so what, what you want to do is to begin to say that, okay, the society, the greater society, needs to move in X direction. Right. What can I do to help move the society in that particular direction? Now, when you have a corporate media that make that that con that that people continue to have the impact that they have. Uh, luckily, we're at KPFT Pacifica Network. We don't. We are. <laughs> we do our mm -hmm. own thing. We are not dependent on on dollars from the corporatocracy. When you have a, a such a dominant corporate media in our days, what do we? You know, how do we function? How do we get that out? You 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 simply one. You recognize where you are, what your position is. Mm -hmm. uh, I always say that. Uh, you cannot beat the folks who control the system using their tools. You you cannot dis, uh, you know, using their tools because right. they have developed those tools and they, they know how they work. And so what you have to do is say, what what are my alternatives? Uh, do I find a way of having say uh, uh, a small individual paper, small individual you know. Uh, uh, TV stations, radio stations, whatever, to try to get my message out. Right. But also beginning to think about, okay, inside of this inside of this community, you know, I will go and I will will, will interact with these various organizations and, and get involved in them and, and try to raise certain kinds of questions. Now, never assuming that uh, you can go into an organization that was designed to do one thing and you're simply going to change it and make it something I, else. I, I tell you, that is that is a lot of what a lot of us have been advising, going to the Democratic Party, take it over, change it, and get it, to, given that it's a two-party duopoly, mm -hmm. right? It's a duopoly right now. Right. And and, 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 and quite happen when you, when, you, when, you, when you get in and you change it, then those folks who actually control it just simply move, you know, elsewhere, Right. Right. And so, and so you now you have a situation where you have a party that can deliver nothing for you, right? And so you have to develop your own. You have to develop your own. And once you develop your own, then you can direct what it's going to do. You can direct what your relationships are with the others. Now, this is going to take some time because right. folks say, well, if you're getting in to, quote, win this specific, this specific election, right, you're not going to do it. What you're talking about is something that is mass-based, that is a movement, that will take time. Right, and if if you if you get in it thinking that well I'm going to save the world tomorrow, then, I mean, that's then not going, that, that's right. Happen, it won't right? happen, and you, you'll lose out. You'll become frustrated, and if the it, next thing you know, you'll be a you know a MAGA supporter. Yeah, if you if you take a look at what uh, we see our mainstream media doing right now, is that they are in fact displaying uh, a lot of what has been occurring as making Joe Biden inevit inevitable. If you look at what Carville is doing, they're making him inevitable. Thirty-three percent of the thirty-three uh, percent of the delegates out, and that that's what they're attempting to do now. Uh, like I said before, they're going to be you know we we are going to there are going to be a whole lot of young people out there that are going to feel deceived. They're going to feel that uh, the the system uh, c came out 
to work directly against them, and I don't think they would be wrong. Mm -hmm. And they will also have a distrust, a, a rightfully so, with uh, the gen the older Gen Xs and the baby boomer generations, who uh, one can say is responsible for uh, m for the condition that they are in, from student loans to uh, to having to pay the amount of monies that they pay for college, to the inability to get homes, to the inability to do a whole lot. And one more time, they saw that they got they could possibly get a chance to get policies that support the things that they need. And here we go again. Right. But see, but part of that is is uh, the problem of, of people like uh, Sanders in terms of not giving a full explanation of this is the process. What is happening now is happening all inside of the rules. Right. right. I mean, there, there, there's no trickery. There's no, These are the rules that were in place, right? And well, I, we, I, I don't know if I completely agree. I mean, it, uh, d wouldn't you call uh, what the media is doing some sort of a trickery? Oh, w w no, no. And what what I mean by the rules is that uh, the the media is not separate and apart from you know right. the power structure that is there. So it is in their interest for these folks to win as well as uh, the person who's trying to win. And so what they have done is they have created uh, a situation, uh, a, a set of political rules where the delegates are selected as they are, so people are not being cheated based upon that, right? In terms of our definition of journalism, right? right. And and this, this notion about objective journalism and how you're telling both sides of the story and, and you're equating the, these, these two sides as being the same, right? Right. You are operating in a system where, which allows right. you know, certain kind of things to go on, right? And so what I'm saying is that they are all a part of these established rules that are in place that allows this to go. The, the, the primary purpose is to promote the continued domination and control. You know, Repeat that. that. I think a lot of people don't right. quite get that. It is to, could, is to, to, to promote the continued domination and control of the folks who are in power, right? And, and, and it's not just simply somebody who's elected to the office of president. Those who control the boards, those who control the economy, those who control the social institutions, they're all in this, right, with the same ultimate objective of maintaining the domination and control they have over the society. And it's sad. Yeah. And so, so when, you, when, when you challenge that, you must know that you are going to be challenged. I mean, when you, when you think of the power that they have, to socialize people, to get people to believe that uh, what they're doing is... I mean, for example, right now, this whole discussion about whether or not Stiers or Bloomberg or Trump would be better because they are billionaires. Right. Or the whole notion of billionaires as some benevolent kind of person who just simply uh, you know, would do good things. For as opposed to having made their money on the backs of, and the excess yeah. labor of others. Yeah. And so that's... I mean, that 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 is a part of what rulers do, what rulers are doing. And so folks have to find ways to try to socialize young folks that, hey, this isn't perhaps not the best way we should be going in, and you have to organize and struggle to deal with this. You're not going to vote yourself into power. Right. Right. Well, you know, um, there, there, I don't know if you, there's a, there's a, in fact, I'm looking for it right now. There is a, a, a a sociologist that I interview quick, uh, frequently, uh, his name is uh, uh, Roy Adelson, and he writes a whole lot about. Uh, he he had an he sent me an article today titled "Beware the Bipartisan Legion of Doom: Corporate Democrats and Trump's GOP." Yeah, and he he articulates in the article. Exactly. He says in professional wrestling, the Legion of Doom is name that is a name that conjures up the fearsome physiques and painted faces of one of the great tag teams of all times. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, it is so true. And then he, he, he enumerates the he, he, he gave all the techniques, he, all the techniques that's used by the plutocracy to, uh, first of all, to have people vote against their own interests, to have people fearful of the things that they can hope for, to have people, uh, in, in mm -hmm. fact, we take a look at the lines that we got, you know, the, the later lines that we got in the, um, today in Harris mm -hmm. County. And uh, when Judon told me, he said, yeah, I, I agree, the lines are very, very long, and some other places the lines are very, very long. We know exactly what that meant. Yes. Yes, and 
you know, I mean, there's there's no way that you can can get around it or sugarcoat it or whatever in terms of you are involved in a power game. Yes. Right? And the folks who have the power will do what is necessary to maintain it. And it's not a it is not like one or two people who are sitting up in D.C. or on the West Coast and pulling strings. Right. There is there is a group, a sector of society that is controlling the society and it interacts with each other and make the decisions that are necessary. Uh, now, yes, there are times when there are conflicts uh, inside of that particular group, right? But but the conflicts are, are, are not going to be such that they're going to really uh, overturn the control of the total group over the rest of society, right? There might be uh, discussions about how we're going to redistribute, you know, the wealth among ourselves, right? right? And, and we will uh, give some other folks some stuff such that they will not challenge our having control, you know, of this wealth. And so it is It is by design. It's not happenstance. This is the way in which a capitalist society operates, right? And no matter how much we talk about, you know, uh, benign capitalism or benevolent capitalism. Actually, whatever, uh, Elizabeth called it a uh, accountable capitalism. Yeah, there's no such yeah. thing. Right. Wait, wait, I'll take that back. It is accountable. <laughs> I'll take that back. Right? <laughs> the question is accountable uh, to, to who? who? Right. Exactly, yeah. accountable yeah. to who? Right. Well, you know, going forward, uh, uh, Dr. Jones, I, I, I think what we are in for, uh, first of all, um, my my hunch is that, um, and, and let me tell you, it's, it seems like Biden just may carry the night. That's what it seems like. Even with California, with the, the lead that he has, now I don't know if, uh, if California splits the votes, he may, uh, he, may, he may be able to get a slight lead over, something that we could not expect. If you take a look at what, what Bert, Bernie Sanders has won so far. So here's what I, what I'd, I think we should, we should sort of get to. I think, first of all, I don't see uh, Biden lasting and beating Donald Trump. A lot of people would like to believe that he was the person to beat Donald Trump. I I think Donald Trump played played the Democrats once again by. You, you, I don't know if you remember how uh, they played uh, they played Gore back in two thousand mm-hmm. when they said. We're going to tie him to Clinton. We're going to tie him to Clinton. And then Gore ran away from Clinton, you know. He ran away from the guy, the most popular president then. He ran away from him. And, of course, you know what happened. I think they played, uh, they played the Democratic Party in, in the fear, in, in, the, in, the, in the false fear that Trump has for Biden. I, I think there's no fear there. Uh, no, I, I think that uh, uh, the Trump folks are... Uh, Feel very, rather secure in terms of what they believe to be uh, their, their their road to victory. Oh, right? I, I think so now. Yeah. I think, and this and, makes it official. Yeah. And w- when you look at uh, you know s- some of the opposition that is coming toward them, mm-hmm. uh, it, it doesn't appear to be very strong. Uh, folks cannot uh, vote for, or are not going to vote Biden for president simply because he was uh, uh, Obama's vice president. Exactly. And at the same time. Uh, the, the Democratic Party and Biden and other folks, while they will they will play up Obama to black folks, at the other time they're going to try to move away to say that well you know I'm not like you know exactly. You know, and so this whole notion that that comes up in terms of the white nationalism and, and white superiority in the United States, uh, you know, comes into play. Right. right. I mean, we can never underestimate the importance of that. Right. Uh, even among quote our you know white friends. Right. In terms of you know, what are the benefits of being white in the United States and, and, and how do you respond to it? Uh, that is a, a there is a real difference in terms of how you will be uh, recognized or, or, or responded to by those in power based upon the whole race. Issue. Right. And so one would have to try to say that, well, you know, I am. I mean, for example, I, I can imagine uh, pretty soon. Uh, Biden uh, is going to try to move away from this whole notion that well, you know, and and Carvel and others that you know black folks save the Democratic Party. This that this is convenient for right now. Exactly. Once they get well, actually, it's convenient get, because there's still yeah. more states to vote. Right. right. Once they get out of the South, and, and where 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 they don't have to worry too much about that, then you, you'll see them begin to move, you know, toward the and 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 well come up. And say, well, you know, it, the real key is the uh, suburban. Right. Voter, and, and, but and, and you and know what? Know what the key is that. It is ironic that Clyburn knows this 
and he decided, you know, you, you, Dr. Eddie Glaude from uh, Princeton University, he went on to uh, meet the press and he said, I, could n- I would have never believed that the firewall for Biden, the Democratic Party, would have been South Carolina. He said, I cannot believe that black people would be that firewall to support somebody who likely would, will not have their interest in policy. I'm paraphrasing, but his, their interest in policies if ever elected to the office. Well, and, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure why he would say that, because if you go back and you look at uh, mm-hmm. the, the history of black voting, particularly in the South, in the United States, really, is that uh, we have always been put in a position of, quote, selecting the lesser of two evils. Yes. And, and, and if you go back, and I, I remember uh, going back to Louisiana again, and, and, and we had this, uh, uh, Dallas Epps Morrison was running for governor against, uh, you know, uh, I think it was Earl Long at the time, and, and Dallas Epps was, 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 was the friend, you know, and his position was, you know, he had been sued by the NAACP more than anyone else, mm-hmm. right? And so, so you, you saw this pattern of black voters voting for what they saw was the least objectionable person, right? And so, so for them to vote, quote, for Biden is, is no real difference in terms of the whole notion, look, uh, we don't have these, these we, we don't have any other good choices in there. And so we are going to do this. That comes from the absence of an organized agenda that you put forth you know, to these Doesn't folks. it also come from an a, 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 a absence of information, an absence of knowledge? Because no, 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 I mean, no, no, no. I mean, Biden has been around long enough. Yeah, for folks know him. He's 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 not a uh, he's not someone uh, that's misunderstood. As a matter of fact, many of us were concerned and figured out why uh, uh, Obama selected him in the first place. I remember. Again, Obama was a uh, was was a centrist, moderate Democrat, and this was consistent with what he was doing, right? And so. Uh, his Biden's role on matters that impacted us uh, has been clear. Right? I mean, he has a very, very long record, and people knew about it. They, 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 they weren't ignorant. I that. am not. You what, know what what, what? 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 Really was the selling point? Was yeah. that, oh, uh, we had all of this love and and hope for Obama, and and he was Obama's man, and therefore, you know, we are supporting. Biden because he is a part of Obama's legacy. You never saw them say particularly, well, we are for Biden because of A, B, C, D in terms of policy. It was that this is Obama's legacy and he's going to continue to do what Obama was doing, right? And, 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 and it, it did not get any deeper than that. Right. Because, well, I, again, I think that, that goes to say that, you know, there's a limited knowledge, uh, the knowledge base there. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe the, it, it, to the extent that uh, yes, uh, he was Obama's guy, but being Obama's guy and what he's going to do for your kid's education or what he's going to do you, to relieve your kid of, uh, of, of right. college. When, right, but, when, but when, when you look at the pattern of voting in the United States, right, in terms yeah. of making these kinds of decisions, this is what we see happening, period. Yeah, well, right? I, I, yes, this absolutely. Period, right? You're right about and, that. And, and so uh, we are traditionally being the same as, quote, America Everybody else, in, in, yeah. In, the vote, in other right? words, continue to vote it. against our interests, right? And and this is it's the socialization that that we, we're going through. So in the absence, in the absence of that organizations and agenda building, you know, this is what you get, right? Well, we don't have any. Uh, I'm still trying to. Did, did, are you able to no, see I any better local results? No, I. Uh, the, uh, we still don't have any real local uh, results that yet. Again, it seems like these lines must still be uh, going pretty high. So. Uh, are you trying to say something? Uh, Bernie's at 28% versus Joe Biden, 24. Oh, 28, 24. So Bernie is still winning Texas. What percentage of the vote is in? 21, uh, 22. 22%. Ah, that doesn't bode well at all. <laughs> well, no, no, because the, you know, the, the, one of the areas that is still uh, voting is very active is, is up in the Austin area. And yes. this, is, this is the Bernie's area. That's Bernie's area. Young, Young folks and and and, and, and UT, uh, the the Hispanic vote is well the, the Hispanic population is large, but most of them are not voters. 
right? And, and yeah. this, this is the big problem in terms of what may eventually become, because there are two, two problems. One, many being non-citizens, and two, you have a younger population right. that has not desired to get in, uh, in into the voting yet. And uh, so the, the 28-24 is, is about what you would expect you know, coming out, but the way in which the de- the way in which the, the delegates will be uh, will be assigned, you know, it's it's still right. You know, it's, it's not a very big win for uh, for for Sanders, right? Because again, we're not talking about the popular votes; we're talking about the actual delegates that are going to come out right. of the process, right? Well, l- let me tell you what is interesting here now. Okay, uh, we saw the Democratic Party make a concerted effort to defeat. Uh, Bernie Sanders. We saw them pull out all stops. They pulled out the the, the candidates uh, ga- ganged up on Bernie Sanders. The media, the corporate media, ganged up on Bernie Sanders. The party ganged up on Bernie Sanders. In in meaning, all the party operatives were mm-hmm. out there really attacking Sanders. Now uh, we have Carvel coming out and saying, just maybe Sanders could check it in. He, it's need it. Sanders should probably just go ahead and quit. I have this question for you, Dr. Uh, Jones. Why would he want to do that? Why would he want to make life easier for those who went ahead and did everything they could? Uh, he went because, number one, you know, he's, a, he's really an independent, right? right. And so he, he has never been a part of that Democratic Party leadership structure, right? Uh Secondly, that he sees himself as, as leading a movement, and the movement would be greater than the party. Right. And so th- there would be no there would be no reason to quote sell your movement out for the persons that you're actually campaigning against that you see as being right. And and who a, was a, detrimental a to right. you moving forward and and a threat to the United States that you see uh, yeah. that you want to bring to. And so he would not listen to them in, in that regard, and he will continue to uh, push the movement. As a matter of fact, if he even tried to uh, you know, do something like that. Uh, he would be so seriously challenged by the folks in the movement that he's led. Until that would be a greater uh, tragedy for those young folks and, and those folks who are if trying he to were to do stuff. that. Yeah, yeah, and and I and I really hope that going forward he actually does not do that because I think more than ever I think it is essential now, given what the Democratic Party, its operatives. It's uh, it's purchased media and all these other folks have done to try to undermine one candidate. Let's 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 be clear. This is this was only done to that one candidate. I think the party now it is it is essential, in fact. And I think you, you said it quite quite well, I think. And that is that it will do badly for the movement. If you go ahead and say acquiesce to uh, right to, to the party, yeah. and, and once again, this, this this stresses the importance of having a movement that is that is based on something more than the individual, right? Because if the individual is capped, then of course the movement scatters. But if you have that movement there, it doesn't really matter what they try to do; that it continues to go and it continues to move. There needs to be people in place who are going to push it. I mean, for example, right. <laughs> Some of the other persons who've been coming up, like uh, you know, Cortez and uh, others, Ocasio Cortez right, and uh, uh, Ayanna Presley, Presley and, Ian Omar, and right. yeah, they they have to really begin to play a much greater role in, in trying the, to push this forward, yes. right? And, and 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 not allow it to be a single person movement because that is what kills movements. It is essential, uh, Doctor Jones, going forward. And I and I and I think I, I love what you had to say. It is essential uh, for the movement because it is essential now that this movement continues, and it is essential that this movement grows because what we've seen now is how the party is able to coalesce uh, all the different parts of this plutocracy to cause harm to most, as they have most support them. Right. I mean, they need to study what happened to us right. in the 1960s and early 1960s. And tell, tell us a little bit about right? that, yeah. Well, you know, we, coming out in, in, in 1964, 65, 66, 67, uh, we saw two things happening. Right. right. We saw the, 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 the development of the black uh, power movement that went into the 1970s. Mm-hmm. We saw the counterculture movement, uh, uh, quote, hippies, stuff that was going on that actually changed, challenged a lot of the mores. And, and and it was designed to deal, deal in part with the Vietnam War, right? Right. And so 
at some point we saw these two movements ab- ab- about to coalesce. Right. The Black Power movement along with the uh, sort of counterculture movement and the anti-war movement, right? And 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 this was a a, a progressive we was going on. A lot of the initial uh Gun control legislation was designed to deal with the Black Panther Party. Exactly. Right? In other words, they. they oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. And and so and so we, we saw this happening, and we saw them begin to challenge that. We uh, one of the things that 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 happened when the when the uh, Congressional Black Caucus was formed, and also when the, we had the National Black Political Conventions coming on. Initially, the, the the Black elite would not participate, right. Until they saw this was a meaningful kind of thing, then all they they all decided to jump in and then try to turn it into a political you know operation. Right. And the CBC came out of it, and then they tried to push away uh, the Panthers and other folks who began to raise you know the much more serious questions about systemic change. Right. In the society, and so uh, even some of the corporate people began to pay for uh, black organizations to participate in, in order to control black, them. Right. And and so that happened, and so. You see the same kind of thing happening. Is that well? The CBC is to, also controlled, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And so, so what you see is that these 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 uh, uh, young folks did not realize the power they were dealing with, and they allowed themselves in many cases to be co-opted. A lot of the folks who who uh, we, we see a, a little funny thing used to joke about wearing afros, who you know had no use for quote that hair, right? Then all of a sudden, all these brothers had these big bushes. You know, <laughs> and we, we used to make a distinction in terms of what we call a natural and an afro. Right. A natural was your hair was natural. An afro was when it was neatly quaffed. And, you know, right. all this and and politically, there was something in that in terms of how people identify with that, that they were, that uh, Procter & Gamble uh, took over a whole lot of the stuff in terms of trying to say what we, what would be the true definition of black power, Right. And so then we began to see, you know, development of, quote, black capitalism and all these kinds of things. And so you began to see the co-optation of these very progressive forces. Right. And so it kept moving and moving and moving. And now, you know, we are these, these very conservative baby boomers who are now talking about these young folks doing this stuff. I mean, like, uh, even music, you know, uh, what you could could not sing. Right. I, I, I always kid myself because I was, you know, Getting on my my son about some of the rap stuff. This was back in in, in uh, much earlier. Right. And this position was Danny. You listen to Clarence Carter, right? <laughs> you know, and, I said, well, and then so. and then you went ahead and listened to the words and said, "Did we say that? Did we say that? Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. And so you make these kinds of distinctions, uh, and 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 so they, I think, may have more access to a lot of information than we have, and they might be able to avoid the mistakes that we made in terms of being co-opted so easily. At least I hope that is the case. Wow. Wow. Now, wow. They, it is funny because uh, now Biden says he thinks he's going to win California. Hey, <laughs> farewell could be. <laughs> well, I don't know. The, this the, this is a very that, this that is a be, very strange night, you know. Yeah, and and that really would 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 be the last nail for. Uh, well, I mean, it would set in terms of quote trying to get. The yes, nomination. if if he loses, if he loses California, it is unlikely that uh, I mean, it's unlikely they else. have the no, not unlikely. He won't have the majority, mm-hmm. but but the. It, the interesting thing about it is what we have to. Um, I think. I, I think those of us that are res- responsible older Gen Xers, responsible baby boomers, we have to understand what's going on with our young people right now, and I think it's incumbent upon those of us that that have that uh, that moral fortitude and that uh, that mindset that understands that we have wronged these younger folk for for decades now. Since uh, you know, I mean, uh, even. To some extent, even previous to the mm-hmm. Ronald Reagan revolution, but again, exacerbated by the Ronald Reagan revolution, I think we have a lot of work to do with uh, these young people because absent, absent uh, building them up and, and not having them just uh, take uh, what I would have to consider these several losses as something uh, for that, that becomes... That becomes what they think is their their destiny would would be problematic. Yeah, I think we created a plateau where 
uh, we decided that we had done these things, that we had moved the world in this particular direction, and we wanted folks to come along with them and, and, and stopped. And, 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 and stopped doing it. We became so infatuated with who we were and what we had done until we refused to accept any basic questions coming from those who were behind us. Right. And and they had some very legitimate issues about what we had done and, and how we need to move forward. And we actually stifled that. We stifled that. And I think much of the issues that we, quote, see with them today is part of, partly our doing. Yeah. Now, now, society changes, you know, I mean, social media, all these other kinds of things that are going on. And while we did not necessarily stay abreast of, of all that, and they have, we have to try to figure out some kind of way. How do we reconnect yes. with, 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 with these young folks? And, and how do we listen to them and try to talk with them in terms of what we think ought to be, as opposed to coming in and, and dismissing them and saying that, you know, yeah, you're I, good for nothing and we, you, you, don't, you haven't followed our lead. And, I mean, for example, four minutes. One, one of the things that I've that I've always talked about is us socializing young folks to tell them that they should vote because somebody died for them to vote. Right. Right. You vote with the expectation of getting something out of that vote. Yes, you recognize, you support the folks who help you to get it, but voting is designed to get something out of it. There's some material benefit that's associated with that. Never lose sight of that. And, and, and just simply voting for the sake of voting does not necessarily move you politically where, to where you need to be. I think that is so important because a, lo- a lot of times that is what we tell, we used to tell the younger folk, mm-hmm. right? Somebody died for you to vote, so go vote. But no, no, you, you're you absolutely right. We have to go and vote for a purpose, for a yes. reason, for an outcome. And a lot of young people went out there to vote for an outcome they were expecting. A lot of people, a lot of these young people are disappointed with the outcomes in several places. Of course, we still don't know what Texas or California is going to bring for sure. But what we need to uh, press on to those young people that are listening to us right now is folks... uh, it's a fun organization. Organ- I, I say that again. <laughs> organization. It's all it. about organization. It's about never, ever giving up. It's about understanding that you get hits. It's understanding that the plutocracy does not go down without a fight. The plutocracy will never give in without a fight. So the one thing we have to understand, Dr. Jones, is if we want change, Change is not going to be handed to us on a platter. We have, have to, to be actively involved in that change. And take it. A, oh, say that again, please. Take it. You have to take your change. So, folks, uh, we have about two more minutes left here. I want to thank you guys for uh, uh, listening to to us today. Um, again, I'm here with Dr. Franklin Jones. Why don't you tell us in, in, in 30 seconds or something a little bit about uh, uh, where, you know, wh- what have you been into? What, what, are, what are you about? Well, I'm a retired professor from Texas at the University in Political Science, and I've been active in Houston for you know, quite a bit, uh, done a lot of analysis and try to stay in touch with the progressive movement. And, and that is so important, folks. And I, I, I of course, I'm Egberto Woolley's uh, host of Politics Done Right, Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. 